Welcome back to ABC News Live. First, it is time for Climate A to Z, where our chief meteorologist and chief climate correspondent, Ginger Z, debunks climate misinformation and answers your weather and climate questions. And today she's talking about misconceptions about carbon dioxide and the Earth's atmosphere. So, Ginger, we always hear about the negative impact of carbon dioxide, but we also need CO2. The Earth needs it. So break it down for us, the good and the bad, and where yeah. does it all fit in? Well, that's the thing. CO2 is vital for our planet, right? Basic photosynthesis proves that. Where CO2 got bad attached to it was with humans creating an unnatural surplus into the atmosphere. Our natural carbon sinks, which are all over, including the ocean, only absorb about half of what we are currently producing. So CO2 just keeps adding up and it keeps warming the planet. Ah, carbon dioxide. It's that invisible gas that we breathe out and the plants breathe in. A gas that is so critical for life on Earth. So why are climate scientists always talking about how bad it is? Recently, when I posted about enhanced rock weathering, that was where massive amounts of CO2 are being drawn down by putting rock dust on agricultural fields. Well, somebody asked this. If we get carbon dioxide out of the air, what are the trees gonna do? First of all, nobody says they wanna get all the CO2 out of the atmosphere. The trees would not be very happy about that. We just wanna get back to a natural balance. See, in the last century or so, humans, with our fossil fuel use, have tipped the scales and the concentrations of CO2. To understand the problem, we came here to Columbia's Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory. Come on, this is where they study CO2. Why, in climate science, are we often hearing CO2 and bad? in the same sentence. CO2 is rising right now because of the emissions uh, that we're putting into the atmosphere. And it's rising very rapidly. And carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas, and so it heats the atmosphere. That's the one aspect of it. And the other aspect of it is when it dissolves in seawater, it makes the seawater more acidic, and that has consequences for marine life in particular. Someone asked me, mm -hmm. Why are we trying to take CO2 out? I thought plants wanted CO2. Of course, plants want CO2, and that's a, that's a, very, important, uh, that's a very important aspect of, of what is happening right now, because some of the trees and some of the algae in the ocean are actually fertilized by the higher carbon dioxide, so they actually grow faster. Now, the problem is when you have higher carbon dioxide, it's not only a fertilizer in itself, but it also warms the climate. The climate is a combination of different components that must be just right for, for life to, to exist on our planet. So CO2 itself is not the problem. It's the fact that we have injected 1.5 trillion tons of it since the Industrial Revolution into the atmosphere. That's according to the Global Carbon Project. How do we know? Well, we can compare to old CO2 in cores like this. These sea sediment cores, along with ice cores and tree rings, they are a great way to look way back in time. But we do have a modern capture of CO2 from the last 80 years or so from the Mauna Loa Observatory. It's an observatory that sits right on the edge of the Earth's largest active volcano. And it is famous for being the world's largest continuous observation of atmospheric carbon dioxide. And because we have this data, we have something called the Keeling Curve, named after the guy who started observing CO2, Dr. Charles David Keeling. It started in the late 1950s and goes all the way to present day this modern look at how CO2 just keeps going up, up, and up, and it matches the emissions from our fossil fuels. It's cumulative, too. Most of the excess CO2 that we're pumping into the atmosphere is going to stay up there for hundreds, if not thousands, of years. More than 75% of the CO2 we've put in the atmosphere since the Industrial Revolution came in since Keeling started those measurements back in the 1950s. And in 2024, we saw the highest concentration of CO2 on record. Some people will say, sure, the CO2 is increasing, but come on, it only makes up 0.04% of the atmosphere. How can such a small amount of gas change the entire temperature of the globe? Well, there are a lot of things in nature that are super small that cause big problems. Think about a virus and it causing the flu. Just like in your body, that tiny virus can have huge impacts. That's what CO2 does to the Earth. This is why we talk so much about CO2, because climate scientists say we need to limit our emissions so that we can curb the warming of our planet. 
The last time that carbon dioxide levels were as high as they are now was about three million years ago, well before humans were on Earth. And climate scientists say that part of that was because of volcanoes or solar cycles. So when we look at how fast the increase in carbon dioxide has been over the past 60 years, it's been about 100 times faster than previous natural increases like those that happened at the end of the last ice age, 11 to 17,000 years ago. Right. So we're doing it real fast. The Earth can exist in these conditions. We're the ones who can, <laughs> right? We're the ones in trouble. So. How do we get back to that rebalance? Because yeah. the objective is not to suck all the CO2 out of, of the atmosphere, not. but how do we get to the levels where it all makes sense and that you know the cycles are all working as expected? Even if we were to cut fossil fuel use like completely right now, we would have this legacy load that we had put up into the atmosphere that would take hundreds, if not thousands of years to come down and get back to a regular balance. However, getting to that curbing those fossil fuels as quickly as possible is what climate scientists say we have to do because we just keep adding. We're just going to keep adding. And our natural sinks, like the ocean, are saying, I've had enough. All right, yeah. Ginger, thank you.